Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Morning, good morning. Last week was great. We had a great time praising God and thanking him for all he's done. And, and today we're going to continue our theme of praise and we're going to go to Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're in the Old Testament. We've been having fun in the Old Testament, haven't we? Jonah, and now we're in Chronicles. And so I want to look at this story. Uh, it's, I personally feel like this is a timely message from God. And if you look at what we're going on in our world, as you're turning to Second Chronicles 20, I'm setting us up, uh, we can look at the situation in our world and really be overwhelmed by everything going on, you know? And it can feel like we're in a, a valley of despair or a valley of fear and troubles and difficult circumstances. And I titled this message today, The Valley of Praise, because in the midst of an overwhelming, scary event, King Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah are able to turn this valley of practically what's going to be death, they turn it into a valley of praise. Now, that sounds amazing to me right now with everything going on in our world. <laughs> so if we go to Second Chronicles 20, I hope today that you will be encouraged on how we should face what's going on in our world from our place and our position as people and, uh, you know, personally for me, a lot of the things going on are out of my control. And there's a lot of things that I can't really do too much to change. Now, sometimes things come close and hit home. Like the situation we just prayed for, for the DM family and other things. So there, this could be applied to you today, personal, or you can look at what we're dealing with globally and how do we handle this as Christians? How do we handle this as people of faith in God? So let's go to Second Chronicles 20. And before this, Jehoshaphat appoints judges to help rule and lead the, the nation. And it wasn't long after he appoints judges to rule and help uh, judge situations that now they're under attack by surrounding armies. So Let's start with verse 1. After this, <clears throat> the armies of Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Menunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at Hazazon Tamar, and this was another name for En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was really happy about that. <clears throat> That's not what it says, does it? Jehoshaphat was terrified. Jehoshaphat was scared. And this news, uh, by this news and because of this news, he begs the Lord for guidance. Or in the NIV or in our ESV, he set his face towards the Lord. He sought God's face. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Wow, I love that. So this wasn't just Jehoshaphat by himself as a leader. It wouldn't be just me who seeks God's face, but together we come together to seek the Lord's face together. It's awesome. Verse 5 says, Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. And he prayed. Now pay attention, pay attention to this prayer because it matters what we pray. O oh Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. You see what he's doing here? He's declaring who God is. He's remembering and recalling the God he serves. Oh, our God, 
Verse 7, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. And when they're in this temple, this is what they can do. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. Now, that's a powerful prayer. Because he's, he's remembering what God has done in the past. How many times have we forgotten that God has gotten us through things? And we have to be reminded. And so sometimes we have to remind our own self. We have to remind us here and here that God has gotten us through it before. He'll do it again. And then he recalls the promises of God to Abraham and the covenant that this land is our land. And even though these people are trying to come in to take it from us, you, you gave us this land. You promised us this land. Now, God doesn't necessarily need the reminder. This is more for Jehoshaphat, right? He's remembering these promises that this, this is the land that you've given us. And then they do something really, he says something really cool. He talks about how the time when Solomon prayed in the temple And Solomon prayed a beautiful prayer in 2 Chronicles 6, where basically any time that any person was in trouble, whether they were near the temple or away from it, they could either be at the temple or they could be far from it. As long as they look towards it, if you cry out to God, he will hear you and save you. This is what they believed. This is the kind of faith they had. And I love how he he just ends with that you will hear us and rescue us. So he remembers all that God can do. And then he says, this is, this is where we need help, God. Verse 10, and now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. What he's talking about here is, is God told them not to touch certain nations on their way to the land of Canaan. Well, guess what? Now they're coming back to get Israel, to get Judah, to get the people of God. Verse 11, now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army, army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. That is, a, that is so important, what he just did there. He admitted he needs God's help. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children. So this is a family moment. The Spirit of the Lord. Hey, did you know the Spirit of God is in the Old Testament? There he is. He was there at creation, too, because the Spirit hovered over the waters. God has been working through his spirit, through his son, and through him, himself, the Trinity, this whole time. And now the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. It was as if we're in this room right now, and this still happens today, where we could be in this room and worship, and the Holy Spirit gives someone in this room a word to prophesy, to give, to speak on behalf of God for all of us. And it's a serious thing. And it says, his name was Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, Son of Jael, son of Madaniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. So he came from a long line of important people. Verse 15 said, he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. 365 times that is mentioned in the Bible. Enough for every day, thank God. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them. I love that. He didn't say, go hide in your rooms. No, he says, march out against them. You will find them coming through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. Now, Just real quick, notice that God just gave them a GPS location of where they're coming from. Now, if you're a war strategist or a general, you you love having that. 
There's no black ops coming in to sneak in and get you. You just found out where they're coming from. You know what that means? Now you can stand ready, waiting. You know that we already know our position, right? Jesus has already won the victory for us in, in him, in the cross, in that empty tomb. Jesus has already won the victory, church. Praise the Lord. We know the outcome, too. We know that God reigns and rules and wins. It's important that we remember that. Verse 17 says, but you will not even need to fight. Well, that must have been interesting to hear. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. That is the most encouraging line you could read right there. You're not alone. I'm with you. If God is with you, you are good to go. O oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. That's the second time. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you the second time. Repeating this, encouraging them. Now, this was an amazing word from God, spoken through a man in the crowd. And so verse 18, we see what happens because of it. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. That's why when someone gives a word in this room, we, we take time to worship God and respond. Then the Levites from the clans of Koath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. So Jeho Jehoshaphat's army goes out. On the, way to, on the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, the one who just gave a word, in other words, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, now this is interesting because God didn't tell them to do this. This is what the king was led to do after this. Because what do you do? What do you do as the, as the warrior king and the army, if you're not supposed to fight, you're just supposed to stand there, what should you do? Well, the king has an idea a very powerful idea. The king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love. And that gives me chills. Endures forever. We were talking before service today with the worship team and, and and Pastor Aria was saying uh, that we, that the worship team helps lead us into the battle today. We take this seriously. Let me tell you, our worship team takes our worship seriously. We want to help lead you into this day with worship and battle. But you can do the same thing. You can put on music and you can start your day worshiping God and starting your day in a position of victory. At the very moment, verse 22, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord calls the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. So there was confusion in the camp of who's who. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Wow. God can do something like that then. What can he do in the spiritual realm today? King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. Scholars believe they put that in there to help you understand how massive this army was. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, or Praise, or also known as Baraka in the Hebrew, which got its name that day because the people praise and thank the Lord. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today. 
Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps and lyres and trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them all. Isn't that, isn't that cool? God is even going to handle your reputation. He's going to handle what people know about him. And you know what I like to think about? I like to think that all the evil spiritual forces that are waging war against us that Paul talks about in Ephesians, I like to believe that they all know my God and they can't mess with me because God is my strong fortress, my mighty tower, my shield. They can attack, but they're not going to win. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace for his God had given them, I love this word, simple word, rest on every side. From fear to rest. In the middle of that was God fighting for us while we praise him. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Before we highlight what Jehoshaphat did and how we can apply it to our lives, I want to make sure that we give all credit to God. Before we highlight anything about what a man did, we need to remember that God did. The true star is God because God is his deliverance in this story. God guided them through a, through a prophet. God did the fighting and delivered them the victory. And not only that, God gave them blessings of the plunder and the goods of the other army. And let's remember without God that he, the king and his people, would not have survived. So when I share what Jehoshaphat did, I don't mean to glorify him over God. What I want to do, though, is go, how do we as humans respond to something overwhelming that can be scary, can cause a lot of anxiety and fear in our lives, that can be troubling and bring despair? How should we respond? I think King Jehoshaphat has done an amazing job and is an inspiration for centuries for believers around the world. And so let's look at what he did. And the first thing he did is something, it, this is all rather simple, but in the moment, fear can cause you to panic. You know what I mean? And it can be so overwhelming, you don't make the right choices. And just so you know, King Jehoshaphat was a strong leader, and yet he still got afraid. The strongest Christians you know can still deal with fear. It's what they do with it after they feel that, that is key. And King Jehoshaphat is a great inspiration for us. The first thing he does is he looks to God. He was afraid, but he didn't focus on the massive army. He immediately looked to God. You know, the flesh will respond with fear. That's just the way we are. But now that we have the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, the flesh teach, or the spirit teaches us to respond with faith. If the flesh says respond in fear, the spirit says respond with faith in God. Once we acknowledge the feelings and the issue, by faith, we take our concerns and worries to God. Now, this is something I really wanted to say today, so I put it on the screen. I wouldn't normally put a, a, such a long paragraph all the time. I do sometimes. Anytime you see a, a longer paragraph on here, it's because... I really want us to take this home today. We inflate troubles when we give them more space in our minds and more time in our hearts than they deserve. It's okay to acknowledge present troubles, but it's not okay to dwell on them until they trouble us to despair. We don't have to dwell on them so long that now we're crippled and paralyzed in fear, we can give them to God. We have a choice. Get stuck in a place and mind of constant fear and despair or look to God to fight for us while we experience peace, 
deliverance, and overwhelming victory. The second thing he did is he didn't just look to God. He went to God in prayer. We can go to God in prayer. And he prayed, but he also prayed in community with, other, with all the people. And for us today, we, we pray with believers. If you see something that is overwhelming, would you do something for yourself? Would you call another believer and let them know? There is no reason to fight alone. First of all, God is there, amen? And second of all, we should gather with believers and pray over situations. There's something amazing about when we come together, we're two or more gathered, right? He is there in our midst. We praise God for that. And what we pray is key because Jehoshaphat remembered and really recalled three major things when he prayed. He remembered God's power and his power over the things in our world too. His authority, his sovereignty. He remembered his promises and his promises are yes and amen. They're going to happen. He said you have everlasting life, you're gonna get everlasting life. And then he prays his ability to save. So when we pray, let's first remember God in our situation and that he is greater than that situation. Amen. Now, it appears that he's already done the third thing. The third thing is admit your need for God. He already started that as soon as he turned to God. But he literally says that in his prayer. He says, he says the following words, which I don't have it with me here, but let me uh, read it to you again. We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. We get in trouble when we try to play God, you know? And pride comes before the fall. And we don't even have to face what we're dealing with in our world alone. We get to face it with God. And doing this, he, he drew strength from God and not himself. I draw strength from God, not myself. And there's freedom. There's freedom from fear and anxiety when you admit, I can't, but God can. Think about that for a moment. And that's, that's a takeaway on your screen. There's freedom from fear and anxiety when you admit, I can't, but God can. Have you ever been in the moment so worried, full of anxiety and concern? And if you remember, though, that you can't do this, but God can, it just, that fear just washes away from your shoulders, your head. That cloud of anxiety breaks because you're not supposed to do it on your own. And when you admit you can't face your battles without God, he steps in and takes the battle that belonged to him in the first place. Now, I'm referring to mainly things that are outside of our control or our ability to handle. I'm talking about spiritual battles, too. I'm talking about battles that we've created that we didn't even need to create because fear does that. Have you ever sat down and was concerned about something going to happen and 30 minutes later you've imagined everything bad was going to happen? Like you're a false prophet? I'm raising my hand because I have. <laughs> I've been so concerned about an outcome that I've sat down in my Bible time with God and I've gotten lost for minutes, afraid of what I think was going to happen. That is the power of fear. That is the power of insecurity. That is the power of not trusting God. It's dangerous. I'm not, I can't see in the future. God does. And if I'm trying, I'm being false in what I'm making up in my mind. And I need to give that to the Lord because the battle is not mine, it's his. So when you admit you can't face your battles without God, he steps in and takes the battle that belonged to him in the first place. Number four, what did he do? He trusts, or we do this, we trust and follow God's word. We trust and follow God's word. Jehoshaphat trusted 
God at his word. And then he obeyed it. So God provided a word as the people stood and waited on him. Some decisions need a specific word from God, like in the story when the man spoke up from the Spirit. Some of your situations will need a specific word from the Lord. You're not going to find that watching Netflix, though. I just want to let you know. You're not. I mean, I always pick on Netflix, but I'm just like, what else do we do, you know? You're not going to find that from watching TV and the news. You're going to find that by going to your secret place and hanging out with God. And then notice that these people needed community for God to give a word through someone. So we need to be around other believers. And what's going to happen is when you're having a little prayer meeting, God's going to speak up and speak a word just for you. That still happens today. Praise the Lord for that. Thank God for the body of Christ. Many of our situations can be guided by God's written word in Scripture. In other words, you're reading the Bible, and sometimes a verse that you read is exactly what you need to hear in your situation. It may be that God brings another believer into your life, and they give you that same scripture that you read that morning, and you know that's confirmation from God. The point being is, don't try to fight these battles without God's guidance. Don't try to fight them on your own, and trust him and follow it. Now, Jehoshaphat, one of my favorite points of this story I'm going to have the worship team come out because we're going to sing a couple songs. And one of them is, one of the songs, the first song we're going to sing is one of the songs I sing whenever I get overwhelmed. And I want us to join together to worship and to release some things today, to surrender some things to God and let him fight. But one of the things I love about this story is that Jehoshaphat didn't go and hide and he didn't instruct them to hide. Because God said, I want you to march out anyway, even though you're not fighting. And you're kind of like wondering, what am I going to do? I'm going to chill my thumbs? And the reason why is because they had to respond to this word with faith. So when we're told something from God, we don't really believe it until we walk it out. And they had to look at this massive army and still trust their God who's bigger than that army. And that is where sometimes it gets really hard as believers, if you know what I'm saying. Because God said that he would do this, but do I believe it enough to go forward and live my life? You see, today, we still have to live our lives. Hey, Ryan... Kuhn, Pastor Ryan, he deals with stuff, but I still got to live by faith and go to work and help people follow Jesus. I deal with some things and I get scared about some things, but I'm still going to march out and trust that God's fighting that situation for me. You know what I'm saying? That's what we have to do. The devil, his tactic is to make you so afraid and so overwhelmed by the things that are going on in our world right now that you don't do anything for God's kingdom. And one of the ways that I get to fight back is do as much as I can for the kingdom of God. Because you know why? I don't have to deal with that. God's got it. And even the things that I'm going to face because I'm helping people, when I, when I have counseling or I have coffee with people out in the community and we're talking or I have a phone call, I don't have to fix the entire situation. I just get to guide them to the fixer. And just so you know, I don't have the answer. God does. <laughs> and if I give you any answer, it's probably from God's word, which is still God. And so I encourage people to go to God in their situations, as well as I'll lead them to scriptures on how to help them with that. But the reality is, is they still had to go out and fight. But they didn't fight the way you would think they would fight. They had to live. This is what they did. Number five. Face battles with praise. Face overwhelming circumstances with praise. We get to use praise as a weapon. And when we do, God turns a valley of fear into a valley of praise. That should have been so overwhelming that they are so scared, they're crippled in fear, 
But this leader makes the right choice. He leans into God and leads an entire nation to praise instead. And I have to say, I don't, have a, I don't necessarily have scripture to prove this. So this is just a perhaps, okay? But I like to think that if God can confuse a physical army, God can confuse a spiritual army that's coming against us. That God can confuse the enemy because, and to be honest with you, the enemy is going to be confused. The devil's going to be confused when he's throwing flaming darts at you and you're praising God with faith. Now, I think that's biblical because that's Ephesians chapter 6. When you hold up your shield of faith and you're praising God in the midst of your trials, that's going to mess the devil up. He's like, man, what is going on? This isn't working. These arrows aren't working because the Lord is our shield and he's fighting for us. Praise and worship is a powerful response to an overwhelming issue that you are facing in your life today. And there's so many. I couldn't cover it today, how many different things we're dealing with. But why is praise and worship so powerful? Let me end with this. Because in our praise, we redirect our minds and hearts and reinforce our faith and confidence in the mighty God we serve. Who, is faithfully who has faithfully delivered us time and time again. The last takeaway for you is we get to dwell on the goodness of God while God dwells in the trenches for us. Praise the Lord. And praise reminds us we are victors and defeat is not our destiny. We stand in a position of victory. And praise is a position and posture, posture of victory. Could you bow your heads and just take a moment? I'm going to ask you to actually think about that circumstance. Now, if you've already forget, uh, forgotten about it and given it to God, then don't. <laughs> but if you brought some stuff in here that you need to let go today, would you do that? Because we're going to sing this song, and, you, and you, don't, you, you don't know this. It's a brand new song. So you can use this time to pray. And if you want to sing it to declare it as well, please do. But would you take this first song, this moment, even if you want to gather up here right now and just pray with someone, maybe you can ask someone to pray with you. But would you just take a moment to release, just like he did, just like the king did, immediately he looked to God. What is it today that you need to look to God for and with? And then we're going to praise God. The last song, we're going to praise him. And we're going to lift up our praises to God and declare them because the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Lord, use this moment to set us free, to, to let go of, of control, to let go of the worries and anxieties of today. Lord, some things have hit home personally and close and some things are just in our world. It's overwhelming. But God, we remember you're bigger and greater. An overwhelming victory is ours according to your word through Jesus Christ. So we look to you in this moment. We give it to you and then we praise you because the battle belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen.